Kitty. This is my blog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. This week I'm going to be talking about autumn winter sewing inspiration so if that's what you're interested in please stick around. You can also follow me on Instagram this is my handle here and yeah welcome back anybody that is uh, existing and any new people hi uh, sorry it's been a while since the last video we are still struggling in this household and currently isolating because um, my son has been poorly over the weekend with a temperature and a cough and I'm absolutely sure it's probably just the normal winter snots and cold. Um, most of the school has been in and out like corona yo-yos so we are waiting the test results as we speak and please don't worry he's not poorly, um, he's absolutely fine uh, apart from a temperature and a bit of a cough. So we're housebound. Um, hence my Mandy Boat tea and my scruffy, messy mum bum, because mum bum? That's not quite right. Mum bum. I'll put my teeth in in a minute. Anyway, yeah, the kids are all here, obviously, since we're all isolating, so should we get interrupted, I apologise in advance. So, what have I got to talk to you about? Uh, I've got some interesting things to tell you. So, uh, you might, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I have got a new tattoo, which is not something that I do regularly. Not that I've got anything against ink, but um, I had one tattoo when I was about 21. I went youth hustling in New York. We decided it would be a great idea to have a souvenir of our trip to New York. And that is in a place that I can't show you. It's uh, hidden underneath my clothing. But the other tattoo I've had done is got a very special meaning to me and it is the lucky few tattoo. So you guys will know that um, my niece has got Down syndrome and we are one of the lucky few families to be able to enjoy her and love her and she's bringing joy to our lives. So we decided to go ahead and get the tattoo done. So it's sort of like a worldwide recognition the three arrows um, stand for the uh, uh, trisomy, which means three, so the extra chromosome. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that and it's healed nicely, so that was exciting. The other thing to say goodbye to was my beautiful velvet sofa. Unfortunately, it, um, let's just say someone sat down on it rather heavily and um, it went crack and it was no more. So I've had to purchase new pink chairs for my little area of the kitchen where I spend time just sitting and reading or drinking coffee or chatting to people. So yeah, that, that answers the question for anybody that was asking on Instagram what happened to my sofa. I'm not naming names but uh, there's a uh, man that lives in this house that sat down on it rather hard and broke it. So bye bye pink velvet sofa. Anyway, so today I'm talking about inspiration for sewing. And I have to admit that my sojo has been a little bit missing in action over the last couple of months. I'm finding it hard to get inspired and interested in sewing again. I think it's mainly because um, I feel like I'm just wearing slouchy clothes most of the time. I've been wearing uniform at work, so I've um, not really had the opportunity to or the places to go in order to wear nice clothes. But that's starting to change now and um, I'm getting excited. I do like autumn and winter as a time of year. I love snuggly warm clothes. I love open fires and glasses of red wine and jigsaw puzzles and all of that that comes with um, autumn and winter. So I'm getting excited for what I might make. And I've made my um, plans fairly small because I don't want to feel like I haven't achieved anything. And, and I think if I cut down on the sheer volume of stuff that I'm hoping to make, hopefully I will manage to make something, which would be a bonus. So yeah, first of all, uh, let's cut to some um, interesting ideas from Pinterest. So there are three things that I do when I lose my sojo. The first thing is I go through my fabric stash and look out any fabric that is suitable for the season that I haven't used yet. The second thing I do is go through my patterns and I have got hundreds of patterns um, and just to see if there's anything in there that I have forgotten about that I would really like to make. And the third thing that I normally do is go on Pinterest and have a look for images of things that are interesting to me. So let's cut to a uh, little recording now of my Pinterest boards and get some inspiration there. So these are my boards for Pinterest and you can see I've got a bit of an addiction 
to boards because there is nearly everything you can imagine on here. I just collect ideas and I think it's really useful to have a visual record of things that you like to look at so you can get an idea of what kind of style you like, what colours you're, um, you're interested in and yeah for sewing I find it really helpful. So um, if we look on this board here this is where I collect all my ideas for clothing and I can get a real sense of the sort of style and uh, colours that I'm into. So um, let's start off by looking for ideas for um, a wrap of some sort. Now this one I recently pinned is really interesting to me because you can see it's got almost like kilt buckles on the top there and leather binding right around the outside and I think actually that's a really nice sort of contemporary modern take on um, on a cape and uh, yeah I really really like that one it doesn't look like it would be too hard to make either uh, then you've got sort of more classic style um, knitted type fringed capes that I've been looking at you can see there's a bit of a theme with grey, I really like grey as a colour. This one here, the camel, um, I liked this one, it's cut, the asymmetry on the front there was really interesting to me and it also looks like, I don't know whether it's wrapped or sewn together, um, but I think that colour looks great and because her hair is blonde and my hair is sort of strawberry blonde, I think that that would probably suit me quite nicely. Also looked at this one. Um, layered over the top of a longer line t-shirt with grey jeans. I like that look a lot uh, with the statement necklace on the top. These ones are cable knit so um, last uh, season, last year the this cable knit was really popular fabric wise. You could buy it most places and I think that would be a really soft and snuggly um, keep me nice and warm. This one here slightly sort of younger feel to it with the stars um, yeah I'm not sure I don't know whether or not that one is classic looking enough whether um, I would wear that but I've pinned it because I like it let's see if we can find any more wraps on here that I've pinned I've also got let's go back cars uh, I've got another board for outerwear this one where I've been collecting more images of wraps with more sort of instructions on how to do them. This one is very similar to the one I just showed you, except it's got different fastening, it's got buttons on it. Um, and yeah, I really like the shape of that one. And then it will come up with more suggestions. So you can see once you've pinned one thing, uh, Pinterest will come up with ideas of other things that you might like. So you can see there is a whole bunch this one very much looks like the sky wrap, which is just a rectangle that is hemmed at the top there, so nice and simple. And yeah, there's a couple of ideas here, sort of ideas on how to go about drafting your own, which is really interesting to me. And this one here with the buttons down the side, so there's quite a few ideas there for wrap garments. The other thing I quite like to make for autumn winter is a corduroy skirt so I really like the sort of 1960s patch pocket look of this skirt here. Um, obviously I'd wear that with tights and boots in the winter, um, possibly not quite so short as that but I really love that style and also I've been interested by these sort of asymmetric fronts on these skirts so yeah and Pinterest is offering me a whole bunch of other ideas for that um, yeah if you've got any ideas for pattern suggestions for this kind of skirt please let me know I know the only one I can think of really is the Ariel by Tilly and the Buttons but that's more this sort of shape I think uh, but I do like that look so could be a good one um, just love all these different colours of corduroy, corduroy trousers as well. I'm loving the bootleg look. Well, uh, I've sort of got off skinny jeans a bit. They're not too bad in the um, winter with nice boots layered over the top, but I do love a bootleg for flattering, sort of like you're making your legs look longer. And yeah, definitely into bootlegs more. So the other thing I was thinking about making was 
a coat and um, I will scroll down. I'm pretty sure I started collecting pictures of coats just to get an idea of the kind of style that I'm into. Um, I think a camel coat is going to be a nice staple in my wardrobe, something I can wear every season. And I'm sort of toying with the idea of whether to line it with some funky lining or whether just to go, oh that's the same one, um, full on sort of classic, classic lines. But I do like the camel coats and I particularly like them layered over black. They also look really nice layered over leopard print. See this one's got a different coloured lining and I do like that I just wonder whether or not that will sort of will see me through several years because once you've made a coat you kind of want it to it's a lot of work so you want it to last you so yeah I don't know whether that might be a bit too fashiony so this um, I've recently just this morning in fact watched Elisa Shea do a um, blog about making one of these and I hadn't really I hadn't realized I'd already pinned an idea for that but her tutorial is absolutely fantastic so if you're interested in making that kind of slouchy cardigan which is sort of almost um, a wrap but not quite because it has got the sleeves on it then go and check her tutorial out because it is so simple. In fact, it's genius how it's put together and it's literally just one rectangle of fabric. There aren't any more like that. I'm not sure what that style of cardigan's called, but I do like that. So, yeah, I think that will do for inspiration for now. I definitely need to separate these into autumn, winter. Oh, look at that. That's such a nice look with the different colours of grey and the black bag and the sunglasses. I'm getting inspired for my sewing now. So. so I hope you enjoyed having a sneaky peek at my Pinterest boards. You can of course follow me on Pinterest if you want to. Um, I'm so pretty kitty on Pinterest as well. So uh, head over there if you want to follow my boards so you can see what I've been pinning. So um, I mentioned before the three things that I do. So the first thing that I've done recently is to go through my fabric stash and find out any fabrics that I've bought recently that um, or even not recently like ages ago that have been sat there waiting to be turned into something and I've come up with a whole selection of fabrics so I will grab them here and we'll have a look at them and this might get my sojo going for making. So in the uh, Pinterest video the first thing we talked about was some sort of wrap idea and I have got this absolutely beautiful fabric in my stash it's kind of like a charcoal grey colour um, it's got sparkles in it so you can see those little birds on there and they are sparkly in the light and this fabric is quite a heavy knit fabric and my husband bought it for me I think two years ago maybe even longer and he was generous it was very expensive which is I think partly the reason why I haven't had the courage to cut into it yet but I'm thinking that I might make something out of this that it's kind of like a wrap or an outerwear garment because I don't think I would wear a dress with this much pattern all over it and um, it's not really sort of skirt fabric can't make trousers out of it so I think it's definitely going to be a wrap of some sort and um, if you've been following me for a while, you might remember that I made the sky wrap pattern last year for my mum. If I can find a picture, I will pop it into the video. Um, I made it in sort of like a navy blue coloured wool coating fabric, had huge coconut shell buttons down the side and then this really pretty cotton lawn lining and um, my mum was really pleased with it. And at the time I thought, oh, I'd make myself one and I've never gotten around to it. So I definitely want to give some sort of wrap or outerwear thing a go. And I think this might be the fabric to do it with. I don't know. What do you think? Have you got any other ideas of what I could do with this beautiful fabric? I've got a, probably about two metres of it. And like I said, it was really quite pricey. So I want to make, I want to make use of it somehow. So let me know what your suggestions are. The other thing I've got is I've got a rather generous piece of this fabric which I bought from Franklin's and this is a sort of sweatshirting style um, jersey with a uh, texture on it and embossed stars and I've probably got two meters of this as well. Now this mustard colour 
I'm not convinced that that needs to be near my face. I'm not sure it does much for me, this colour. And so I'm, I'm not sure what to do with this either. I don't know whether or not to make a wrap with this because, yeah, is, is, it, is it really doing anything for my skin tone, that musty colour? I'm not sure. The only other option I had for this one was perhaps just from slouchy um, tracksuit bottoms, the Stella joggers or something similar from Tilly and the Buttons. But again, if you've got any ideas of what I could do with this, I think I don't need it near my face, but I did pick this out thinking perhaps I could make a wrap with this and then thought, mm, I don't know, it's looking at me there. Not sure it's my colour. Um, corduroy, so I had got a couple of pieces of corduroy in my stash, but this I bought specifically to make some sort of winter skirt with um, at the knitting and stitching show. And it's kind of like a taupe, brownie, don't know what you'd call that colour really, mushroom maybe colour. The only thing with this corduroy is it's got no stretch in it at all and um, I know from experience having made lots of corduroy things in the past, one you need to line whatever you're going to wear that's corduroy because it will just rise up when you're wearing tights. Um, not so bad with trousers obviously but if you're making a skirt and you're going to wear it with tights you definitely need to line it because it just moves up as you walk. And the other thing is that corduroy just tends to bag uh, the more you wear it so um, you could make a, a garment that fits you perfectly and then within sort of 10-15 minutes of having it on and wearing it, and I know this because I made the Jessa trousers in a black non-stretch corduroy and they are literally fitting me for like 10-15 minutes and then they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and, and you know the knees go in them and stuff so yeah. I don't know what to do with this fabric, whether to go ahead and make a skirt with it given the fact it's got no stretch in it, or purchase some more corduroy with stretch in and make a skirt out of that, I don't know. What are your experiences? Do you like corduroy that hasn't got any stretch in it? Anyway, the next piece of fabric I've got has also been in my stash for yonks, and I bought this, I think, at the Handmade Fair. Lots of people had this fabric at the time. It's absolutely beautiful. I love the colours in this. It's got little birds in as well. And I still have not cut into this fabric. So I don't know whether or not I am a pattern all up round your chops kind of a girl. Do you know what I mean? I'm not very adventurous when it comes to wearing lots of pattern near my face. It could, of course be a nice dress but I don't have enough for that. I think I only bought a metre thinking I was going to make a t-shirt or something out of it but with winter coming maybe maybe another one of these Mandy Boat tees, I don't know. I'm not sure but looking through I found that and thought that is definitely autumn winter colours. It's definitely got to be made into something to wear this time of year. And then the last piece of fabric I found in my stash is a denim and this is a dark, almost black, it's not sort of a pure black but it's kind of a charcoal grey black denim. Again it has no stretch in it so I've learnt a lesson, don't buy fabric without stretching. I think I prefer to be able to have that sort of stretch in there to give you a little bit of uh, comfort and also to help the garment fit better. But I don't know what to do with this. I've got absolutely oodles of this fabric. Uh, there must be at least three metres, maybe two and a half metres there. And originally I think I was going to make the kids dungarees or something with this, but I never really got round to it. And this is definitely autumn winter fabric, so yeah, uh, I don't know what to do. Let me know what you think. So, coats. We're moving on to coats. Oh, I've just found some patterns in my stash, so I was just going to show you. Um, as I went through my patterns, I found this one. So this is a simplicity pattern, K1108. And it's hideous in terms of styling. I mean, why do they do this on the commercial patterns? It just looks awful. But if you look past the styling on the envelope and think to yourself, this made out of some sort of stretch jersey, or this one, this is very similar to that one I was talking about that Elisa Shea has just done a tutorial on and her um, YouTube channel is called oh, something creativity. 
I'll link it down below. My memory today is rotten. But um, she has done the most fantastic tutorial on how to draft yourself something similar to this. And um, in fact, it's pretty much the same, except for this one has got sort of pleating or darts or something around the neckline there. But yeah, that is an option, I was thinking. If you look past the envelope and think about some sort of really nice snuggly jersey, that could be a good um, wrap or shrug version. And then the other pattern that I found, and this is the only one in my stash, skirt-wise, that was kind of similar to that 1960s skirt I showed you. And this is this one, M7475. So I haven't used this pattern yet. I think the culottes is what drove me to buy it. But if, in fact, if I did buy it, it might come in a magazine. I don't know, it doesn't say on there. Oh yeah, Love Sewing magazine. But um, the skirts on here are slightly more flared than that one I showed you on Pinterest. So I don't know whether or not that's going to be an option or not. And for coats, I've talked about this before. This coat is cut out, it's ready to go. I just need to get my sojo going and start making this coat. So this is Butterick B6385. And this is uh, Lisette. And this lady is the lady behind Oliver and S who um, I really love their kids patterns. So I'm sure it's gonna be great. Um, I just think that that's such a classic shape, that coat. And I'm gonna make this version here with the more sort of funnel neckline. Um, I'll show you the line drawing on the back here, this one. Um, I just think that funnel neckline is a, a little bit less, uh, the Peter Pan collar is cute, but I want sort of a slightly edgier feel. So I'm gonna go with that. This pattern I've got in sizes six to 14, which goes from, oh, hang on, let me tell you, a 30 and a half inch bust to a 44 inch bust. Um, that's a size 22. So they've obviously split this pattern into two different envelopes. So this one goes up to a 36 inch bust. And yeah, I think that's going to be a nice coat. And like I say, I've already cut it out. I've cut it out of this lovely sort of camel coloured coating that I got from Minerva, ready for a blog post for them. And I just need to get on and sew the thing up, but it's just been sat there for ages and taken sort of second, it's sort of taken a back seat because I've been interested in doing other things. The main thing I've been interested in lately is making buttons. So I really, really want to make that coat and I'm hoping to be able to make the buttons to go on it as well. So I'm thinking if I do something like the sky wrap, which has got three large buttons down the side, I could give the button making a go and see how I get on. I have been sort of practicing and mucking about with polymer clay and um, there is going to be an interesting little tutorial coming up hopefully on how to use the polymer clay to make the buttons, but I'm still in the process at the moment of um, practicing and trying to get better at it so yeah that's something that's coming up in the pipeline so yeah I hope you enjoyed that vlog today um, I'm sorry that they're not coming as frequently as they might be but like I say the, the world's gone mad and you know whenever I can get a spare minute to do one I definitely want to chat to you guys because I miss having that conversation with you all and finding out what you're all up to as well. So please do leave me a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.